Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson and I've been getting tons of requests for an update video on the cowfish and the leopard wrasse. Well since I'm doing that I might as well go ahead and update you on the 24 gallon nano cube. So here's a quick update on the 24 gallon nano. The best thing about my house is we back up to an open space park with a lovely view of a pond. To see this view we leave the windows open most of the time and of course the 24 gallon nano cube sits right next to a south facing window getting light on it all the time. So the window placement's bad for algae. What's really bad for algae is feeding your fish too much. So I started seeing lots of algae growing in the back and I watched my wife feed the other day and she was feeding my fish about what I would feed in 10 days. So we've had a little training issue going on with this tank. So we're getting her to feed less. I just did a big water change and scraped the algae. Now the tank doesn't look perfect. You're gonna see little pieces of algae hanging off of everything. That's because I just scraped the glass. It's blown around the tank. I can either wait until things are pristine or I can show you guys what actually happens when you own a reef tank. So let's take a look at the tank and see how it's doing. When Great White Aquatics went out of business, we got some coral for this tank before the tank was ready. We got this green bird's nest coral. We got a toadstool leather, and we got an alien eye chalice. And they really did poorly early on because the tank was just not ready to go, but they were so cheap and there was nothing to do with them. Anyways, they're looking a lot better. I just gotta go manually remove the rest of this algae that's stuck onto this stuff, and they'll look great. New to the tank is the Simulera. And we actually took this out of the five gallon tank. It had just outgrown the five gallon tank. We've also purchased this neon green candy tank. When setting up a new tank, I really like to let things stabilize before adding the more sensitive SPS coils. Well, this purple Monty was dirt cheap, but this tank was not ready for it. So as soon as it went in, it bleached out, it started to recede. You can see the part in the middle that's dead. Well, it quickly recovered and it's looking fantastic now. But it's really not ideal to put a coral in a tank before your tank is ready for it. And of course, my wife loves Zoas, so she keeps adding more. In this tank, I keep a couple fish that I really like for nano tanks. First is the yellow clown goat. This is a little guy with tons of personality that does great in a nano tank. The other is a one spot blend. These guys are great for algae removal and they really only need about a 20 gallon tank. So for a 24 gallon, it's a perfect fit. Saving the best for last, the cowfish and leopard rats are doing fantastic. The cowfish eats like a pig. He begs for food all day long. I like to keep him fed on nori. This is an easy food that he can graze on and just kind of pick at it all day. He's shown no real signs of ill health. He's just done fantastic in this little tank. I really don't recommend a cowfish for a nano tank. I'm keeping him in this 24 gallon until he's big enough and healthy enough to go into my 210 tank where he can compete with eight tanks for food and make it. When it came time to film the leopard wrasse, he decided he wanted to stay on the side of the tank that's the hardest to film. But I got him filmed and if you look at him now, he's eating fantastic. I started with the V20 nano mysis shrimp that this guy was eating at the store and he ate that pretty well but when I put him in the tank he really didn't care for the LRS but over time he started to pick at it and look at him now he just goes crazy for the LRS he eats like any other fish in the tank I think this guy would actually do really well with my tangs at this point but he's gonna stay here for a while now a little cautionary tale with the V20 nano mysis shrimp. I got some comments from some people saying that they had some pretty negative effects on their fish when they fed the V20 nano mysis shrimp. Now it's packed in alcohol. My fish didn't have any problem with it. So all I can say is before feeding your fish it, do your research on it. But as you can see, my leopard grass is eating well, looks fantastic, and is doing really good in this tank. Some of you were asking about the different names for this wrasse. It goes by the Divided Leopard Wrasse, the Blue Star Leopard Wrasse, the Vermiculid Wrasse, 
it goes by a lot of different names. And that's kind of the problem with our hobby, is there are so many names for every fish and every coral. I'd love to use the scientific names, but they're impossible to pronounce most of the time. So from now on, I'm just gonna call this young lady the leopard grass. Overall, this little 24 gallon nano cube is doing really well. All the fish in here are doing extremely well. And two of these fish are expert only, which I think is great. Now, this is my wife's tank. So it's got algae problems. There's a learning curve happening. But I gotta say, for somebody who's new to the hobby, to have two expert only fish in the tank and have the only real problem be some algae caused by the sun and overfeeding, she's doing a great job with this little tank. So thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.